Visual literacy is thinking with pictures. Using visual literacy, we recognize, interpret, and understand information presented through visual objects and symbols. We're also able to communicate with visuals in a universal language that can transcend words and represent depth and description. We can make sense of the world around us using visual literacy. How visual literacy might be used is an amazing question. From everyday living to analyzing artwork, to how a physician might develop a relationship with a patient and make specific diagnoses. Visual literacy transcends disciplines. Hi, I'm Rebecca Ewert Schaefer. As a doctoral student in the College of Teaching and Learning at Illinois State University, I've started researching how visual literacy might be used by diverse populations for varied purposes. Visual literacy itself is a large field. It can, and it can encompass everything from a skill, an inquiry process, a method for analysis, and is even a communication strategy. For this particular project, I examined the impact of visual literacy specifically on medical students and how it might be implemented in their education. Despite the difference of learning styles and cognitive abilities, Traditional research indicates that most people have a tendency to think in words rather than in pictures. And yet, Aristotle is credited with saying without image, thinking is impossible. In our image-centric world, pictures have value. Research shows that the use of visualization and thinking appears to be increasing. Moreover, research also shows that how we use visualization, our visualization skills, can be developed by practice. This has thrilling implications for how visual literacy might be utilized across different fields. The first step to engaging in visual analysis starts with making observations, followed by asking questions. Students can be engaged through a three question strategy. What do you see? What makes you say that? And what else do you see? Students are thereby guided to interpret and identify visual details and objects they see based on their own experiences, background, and knowledge. As I read about how humanities and visual literacy experiences were frequently added to medical school curricula, I began researching first the origins and how those programs took shape between different schools. Interdisciplinary programs debuted in 1998-99 and recent statistics indicate more than 70 clinical programs in the United States formally partnered with art institutions and like-minded programs to provide visual analysis training with the aim of improving medical diagnostic skills. Additional programs also exist in Canada, Australia, and Italy. Despite finding specific program information from at least 11 institutions, there is a definite lack of published results. For instance, only limited information was published regarding long-term benefits of visual literacy for medical students. Aside from the stated objectives and session descriptions, few details were communicated on how to assess if the goals were met and how well students represented their learning. Without appropriate tools with which we might measure student progress, how can a program's success truly be determined? Returning to my research question, how can the impact of visual literacy on medical students be assessed? Let's think again about the necessity for a medical professional to make accurate and specific observations. Visual literacy was first introduced to medical students in an effort to address several acknowledged deficiencies in the education, including little training in how to make observations and few opportunities to practice observing patients. But increased observational skills isn't the only benefit associated with visual literacy. Students also gain time to reflect on their own development and communication skills, often honing those skills to connect with others. With visual literacy training, medical students practice making observations, asking questions, interpreting results, and communicating findings. But that's not all. Professor Sarah Archino maintains that incorporating visual literacy, specifically art history training, 
into medical curricula offers a chance to practice the skill of looking at a multi-layered scene that might not have one single conclusion, like a complicated real-life scenario when dealing with a patient with multiple conditions. It's easy to imagine the parallels between holding multiple details that might each be valid and envisioning multiple possibilities for a diagnosis. Said another way, tolerating ambiguities and knowing how to manage them is said to be one of the conditions for being a medical expert. There is often no single clear answer or correct course of action, which can cause stress, especially on inexperienced students or junior physicians. So visual literacy can have a tremendous impact on a medical student's education, and research consistently demonstrates that applicable observation skills increase with structured guidance and opportunities for practice. How that looks across programs, however, proves to be quite different. When I examined curricula for medical students, key components were varied based on who conducted the training and how frequently that training was held. There were also different activities undertaken in each program. Examples are provided. Generally speaking, though, class sessions began with individual observations performed by each student on a work of art. Students then worked in groups to communicate and discuss their findings. There are two approaches to how training like this might be structured. Visual thinking strategies, VTS, and artful thinking. VTS was originally designed by psychologist Abigail Hewson and art educator Philip Yenowin to help students learn to use visual arts to build observation and critical thinking skills. Artful thinking was developed by Project Zero to integrate art and music into classrooms. Stimulated by instructor-guided questions along with individual observations, students are introduced to a technique called thinking routines. Activities that start with observation and include processes of reasoning, questioning and investigating, observing and describing, comparing and connecting, finding complexity and exploring viewpoints. Solid partnerships between medical schools and art museums or organizations greatly contribute to the success of any program as each organization represents a separate discipline focused on facilitating learning through art observation. Schools who implemented visual literacy with structured art observation experiences claimed positive results, with students boosting their ability to make specific observations and interpretations supported by evidence. Most researchers based their conclusions on pre- and post-test observations collected from students completing the course. Significant changes, including less use of subjective vague terms like normal or healthy, and more detailed ex explanations rose to the top of the list. There was also an increased number of students incorporating visual images in their own presentations. Interestingly, they also found an increase in speculative thinking, where words like suggests, might, and seems were used in student communications. Detailed, specific observational skills that also consider more than one reason behind a symptom are clearly important to future physicians. But why pair medical education with art history or analysis classes? In many ways, the opportunity to experience the practice of making observations and subsequent analyses mimics the work performed between a doctor and patient, where a doctor observes the patient's behavior and nonverbal cues as much as he or she listens to their words and measures their bodily functions. The impact of visual literacy on medical student educations can be powerful, but there's a lot left to determine. We don't have a lot of published data on objective, non-anecdotal evidence. There aren't always control groups in place to gauge the effectiveness of training, and programs across institutions differ and are not always straightforward to compare. How much exposure or practice do students require to make a difference in their skills? Is that difference long-term? Does instruction need to be guided by a museum professional to have more value? And how can that value be measured? Medical students able to participate in a visual literacy class experience certainly are engaged and report increased observational skills. Further impact than that, however, still needs to be determined. There is then substantial opportunity for future studies to determine how to collect and process evidence in both the implementation 
an examination for visual literacy in medical student education. I look forward to continuing my research into visual literacy and appreciate your attention here. Thank you.